So as we mentioned previously, there's two basic different types of cells, the eukaryotic cell and the prokaryotic cell. And what we're going to talk about today are two types of the eukaryotic cell. So eukaryotic cells have a nucleus, they, they have other membrane-bound organelles, and they're typically larger and more complex than prokaryotic cells. So the two examples that we're looking at today are the animal cell that you see over here on the left, and then also the plant cell. And so let's start first by talking about they have many of the same organelles, and then there are a few organelles that only animal cells have, and there's a couple that only plant cells have. But we're going to start um, sort of at the controlling center of the cell, and that would be the nucleus. And so the nucleus is this organelle that we see is present in both the animal and the plant cell. And there's going to be another video that's going to talk uh, in more detail about the nucleus and the, the DNA and the way that it is packaged in the nucleus. But basically, that's the job of the nucleus. It has a membrane that surrounds all of the genetic material for the cell. So all of the chromosomes are inside of this nucleus, and they're protected there. And we see that the nucleus actually has a membrane around it called the nuclear envelope. And this nuclear envelope has pores, and it allows only the passage of certain molecules in and out of the nucleus to protect that genetic material that's inside the nucleus. In, in the, the center of the nucleus, we see the nucleolus, which is the portion that the RNA is going to be produced. So we have the same thing over here in the plant cell, nucleus and the nucleolus. And as we work our way out from the nucleus, you see that we have these sort of folded looking membranes dotted with these red dots. Okay, this organelle is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it's rough because of the presence of these, what are shown here in the image as red dots. Those red dots represent ribosomes. And ribosomes can exist in the cell either on the rough endoplasmic reticulum or free in the cytoplasm. So you can see that we have um, ribosomes uh, just in the cytoplasm. What are ribosomes? Okay, we're going to talk about these as we go through the semester, but these are essentially protein factories. So this is where the cell is going to actually, pr actually produce the proteins that are coded for by genes. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum then is going to be the site of many the production of many proteins because of the presence of all of those ribosomes. And as we move out from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, we see that we have smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, it is a separate organelle and it has different functions. And you notice that it's called smooth. It doesn't have the dotting of those ribosomes. And the job of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is actually in producing lipids. So we see that if we look over here at the plant cell, the plant cell also has rough endoplasmic reticulum dotted with ribosomes, and the plant cell also has smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And as we work our way out, I want to point you to another organelle called, the, this. In, in this drawing it's called the Golgi apparatus, sometimes it's called the Golgi body. It's present in both the animal and the plant cell. You can think of the Golgi as a sort of a shipping and receiving, a receiving and shipping dock. So as proteins are produced in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and as lipids are produced in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, those can be packaged up into what we call vesicles. So a vesicle is essentially just a membrane-bound compartment that can travel throughout the cell. So if we're talking about the rough ER, as after a protein is produced, the rough ER can pinch off a little piece of its membrane with a protein in it and send that in what's called a vesicle to the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. That, that vesicle will then fuse with the Golgi apparatus and some kind of modification will occur um, as it moves its way through the Golgi apparatus. And then the Golgi will package it up using some of its own membrane into a vesicle to ship that protein off either to some destination in the cell or to fuse out here with the plasma membrane and be released um, outside of the cell. So again, the same thing is happening 
in the plant cell. There's a Golgi body there. I'm just going to erase a little bit so we have a clear diagram to look at. Okay, working our way around the cell, another organelle I want to point out to you, um, or organelles, is the mitochondria. And notice that in the animal cell it shows multiple mitochondria, the same thing for the plant cell. Different cell types will have different number of mitochondria based on their energy need because what is a mitochondria? We can think of it as the powerhouse organelle. That's because its job is to make ATP, which is like the energy currency for the cell. If the cell wants to move a molecule, if the cell wants to produce something, it needs ATP, it has to spend ATP to do that. Just like if you want to put gas in your car or to buy food, you have to spend money, that's your currency. ATP is the currency of the cell. So the mitochondria is the organelle that produces ATP for the cell. And as we go through the semester, we'll learn about how that's done. But essentially, the food that you eat, your body breaks down into nutrients, and those nutrients like glucose are transformed in the mitochondria into ATP. So the mitochondria is the, is the powerhouse of the cell. As we continue looking at other organelles, one major one I don't want to forget is essentially the plasma membrane. So this is the barrier between what's inside the cell and what's outside the cell. And I want, to no I want you to notice that the animal cell has a plasma membrane. The plant cell also has a plasma membrane. The plant cell has an additional um, structure outside the plasma membrane called the cell wall, but I do not want you to confuse the cell wall and the plasma membrane. They are two different structures. All cells have to have a plasma membrane no matter what type of cell. And the plasma membrane is like the gatekeeper. Okay, this is what's deciding or determining what can get into the cell and what can get out of the cell. Animal cells don't have a cell wall. Plant cells do. The cell wall is a more rigid structure and this is what's going to give the, cell, the plant cell some protection. It, it provides support um, and even helps to give shape to the plant cell. Okay, working our way around, I want to point out to you um, the cytoskeleton, which is present in both cells. So we see here microtubules, we see intermediate filaments, and we should also see, here we go in green, microfilaments. So those are three components of what are known as the cytoskeleton that can give structure and support, and they can also aid in moving molecules. Um, or, or anchoring organelles within the cell, and they're present in both animal and plant cells. And um, I want to point out to you a couple features that are present in only the animal cell. So the first of those let's talk about is the lysosome. So the lysosome you can think of as like the garbage disposal for the cell. The job of the lysosome is to break down let's say old worn out organelles or proteins or cell parts and break them down, digest them with specialized enzymes. Okay, now the plant cell does not have a lysosome, oh, excuse me, a lysosome. Um, another organelle in the animal cell that the plant cell does not have is this right here called a centrosome. And you'll notice that it has a pair, the centrosome has a pair of what are called centrioles. Okay, now the function of this organelle has to do with cell division. So when a cell gets ready to divide, it has to distribute two sets of the DNA, one set to one daughter cell and one set to the other, and the centrosome aids in making sure that things are distributed and moved around the cell as they should be. Okay, let's look over here um, at the plant cell and talk about some organelles that the plant cell has that the animal cell doesn't. And we mentioned one already, which is the cell wall. Um, another one I want to point out to you is the chloroplast. So the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis, meaning this is how plant cells are able to convert sunlight or energy from sunlight into chemical energy or essentially making their own food or making their own sugar. So we'll talk about the chloroplast even more later in the semester. Another organelle I want to point out to you 
um, in the plant cell that's not in the animal cell is this large central vacuole here that's filled with with water and if you if you've ever had a plant that you forgot to water for a few days and it starts to kind of be wilted and it doesn't really stand up very well that's because there's not been enough water to fill up this vacuole which in turn presses against the cell wall to to give pressure to allow support um, so that that plant stands up nice and strong so uh, uh, this the central vacuole is important in can, holding the water providing pressure against the cell wall now another thing I want to point out are these small plastids in plants that store different color pigments which is when you look at different flower petals or other colors in plants it's these pigments in these plastids that are um, allowing them to be that color now one organelle that I haven't pointed out that's present in both is the peroxisome and, and this is an important organelle the peroxisome helps to detoxify it does this by what are called oxidation reactions and many times the result of that is a chemical that can be harmful to the cell called hydrogen peroxide but because that is contained in this membrane bound peroxisome then there are special enzymes there that can convert that hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen which are not harmful one thing I want to point out to you about a peroxisome is this is what detoxifies the alcohol so if you drink alcohol there are peroxisomes in your liver cells that are detoxifying the alcohol and that's what's responsible for doing that so I believe we've covered um, the organelles and in, in later videos we'll look in detail at the plasma membrane and the nucleus and some of the other ways that organelles communicate with one another